and introduce him. There you go. sure he can talk and raise your hand yeah. and that's kind of the point of this. So don't feel like you just to listen to the lecture. He, he wants to share as well knowledge I guess. Right. Is that your report? Please up. Right, you're up. All right. Uh, it's good to see everybody tonight. It's good to see a lot of uh, new people here. I've been coming to this for quite a while with uh, Kenny and the uh, group keeps getting bigger and bigger and more states coming. That's awesome. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, using wide splits in a spread offense. Um, uh, just to give you an idea of at CAC, or actually in my career, I've been a head coach for 24 years. All 24 years, I've pretty much been uh, two by two, three by one, 10 personnel spread. Yeah, I wouldn't say we were air raid, but it may look like it if you didn't know anything else about it. So. Uh, and so what happened was is I had a group two years ago uh, that um, I lost all of my receivers, all right? And, uh, and I was sitting there and I'm looking at who I've got coming back and I don't have a kid who has a catch or hardly even, probably even a play in a varsity game, all right? And so, uh, so I'm looking at who I've got and I don't have anybody coming back who can play receiver. Uh, but I do have a three-year starter coming back at quarterback. I've got a really good tailback, and I've got a pretty solid offensive line. And so I was trying to figure out what we were going to do with that. And I had a couple of kids who weren't good enough to play receiver, and one of them's my own son. And but he was a kind of an H-back, you know, tight end type kid. He, you know, he wasn't that big, but I had two of those kind of guys. And I thought, okay, well, let's look at some eleven personnel. Uh, that kind of thing. And so what I decided is, is we were going to base out of the power and counter, all right, out of a two-back set, sniffer set, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so uh, I went around trying to uh, figure out what's going to be the best way to run those two plays, because to me, if we're going to run those plays, it was all about how are we going to protect those plays. Because anybody, you know, the coaches are going to be good enough to stop power and counter unless we're doing something else to keep them uh, from doing that. And so uh, one of my coaches is from Texas, my O-line coach, and he said, hey coach, the, the folks at Rockwall, uh, which is, a, you know, if you've ever gone to Dallas, you pass through Rockwall, probably the first big stadium you see when you're going to Dallas. He said, coach, they run a lot of power and counter, and they're really good guys, you might want to call them. So I called, uh, I called uh, Rodney Webb, he's the head coach there. He actually got the job at Denton Ryan uh, last year during spring. But I called him and I said, hey, coach, I know you run a lot of power and counter. Will you send me some game film? And so he sent me, uh, he sent me three games. And I, I mean, I took those things and broke them down. And he's, now he's at Rockwall. He's, a, he's playing. At, the, the films he sent me were Allen and Highland Park and Mesquite. I mean, he's playing dudes, okay? And he's beating them. He beat all three of them. So, I mean, you know, he's got good players, but he hasn't got probably as good players as Allen's got. But, uh, but anyway, but I've got his film, I'm breaking it down, so I know, you know, he's not playing these terrible teams and just running through them, all right? And so I called him, I break it all down, I said, hey, coach, after I break them down, I had like two pages of questions, you know? I'm like, hey, can I call you and talk to you about it? And so I call him, and uh, it ends up, he says, hey, coach, I'm gonna tell you that what we're doing is, he said, I always used to be a Gus Miles on guy. We did the buck sweep, the power, the count, all that stuff, if you're familiar with Gus's stuff. And he said, but, you know, we want to do something a little different. And uh, we found a guy who was a GA at Baylor for Art Riles. 
He said, Coach, this stuff is like a cult. He said, nobody will tell you anything. And uh, he said, we had it was everything we could get, just get anything out of it. And so he spent about two hours with me on the phone, and we just started from square one. And I said, Coach, tell me everything I got to know to run this. And he pretty much did. And so, uh, and so uh, some other resources I found, Randy Jackson, some of you may be familiar with him out of Forney. He's the guy that wrote the culture book, but he also runs this offense. And, uh, and then uh, there's a blog by some guys named Col Taylor Colty, and they've got a thing on the route I'm gonna talk about, an entire article on just this route, because it's basically the only route we run. And uh, so anyhow, okay. So that's all that stuff. I don't want to bore you too much of that. This is basically what our offensive philosophy is. And it's in much ways different than anything that I had done before. And I'll be honest with you, after he told me everything they were doing, I thought, Art Bryles is a genius. I, thought, I mean, there's a reason why that guy's winning. I mean, because this stuff is, makes so much sense and it's so smart. And I'm like, how come I wasn't smart enough to think of this stuff? So anyway, so uh, I'm going to give you a real kind of what we did with it. Uh, there's a little bit more if you're more of a one-back team that, uh, that we did a little bit with, but not much, but probably will next year. But here we go. So here's our, our offensive philosophy. It all starts with wide splits. We're going to get not just wide splits, really wide splits, okay? And if you've ever seen Baylor back in the day, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, we're trying to stretch the defense. Everybody always talks about that, wanting to use the whole field. We want them literally sideline to sideline. And uh, we're gonna try to break the field into three different areas. I'm gonna talk about that here in just a second, what I mean by that, but that's really the way we look at it, okay? And then everything is about protecting the run game. I wanna protect the power in the counter, so how am I gonna do that? Because if you've played us, and there's a couple of guys in here, they'll tell you, if we're running the football, it's power or counter. I mean, that's just what it is. So, uh, okay, so uh, this is basically us lined up. Our splits are this, the outside receivers. Now, we don't, we don't flip-flop the outside receivers, we have, and mainly because we don't want them running all the way around the field, okay? We're going to put them between the numbers and the sideline. Uh, the slot backs, which is the only guy that moves around, he's going to be between the hash and the numbers. Now, I will be honest with you, I have to – tell them all the time, widen out. I'm yelling it almost every play, widen out, get wider. Cause you know, they just want to, they don't want to get out there. But I tell them, get wider. And so when we're talking about there's three parts of the field, this is basically what we look at. We're looking at one of those areas is the box. Okay, so the box to us is two ghost tight ends. Okay, the outside shoulders of those guys to eight yards eight yards deep. That's a, kind of the hard deck area. So once safety start creeping in the box, then we gotta have an answer for that. But most importantly, what we're trying to do is affect these outside linebackers. If they are not in the box, and I'll talk about a run game in a minute, you'll see why the run game is effective, okay? Um, so anyhow, so that's the main thing we're trying to do, is spread everybody out, and we want six guys in here that we can block. Okay, that's kind of the basis of it. Okay, the other thing that we want to do is we want to be simple. We are incredibly simple. Much more simple than I have ever been. All right? Uh, we basically have two runs. We're going to run power and we're going to run counter. And we get really good at them. And that's all our guys run. Uh, we do have a one-back run that if we were in two-by-two two or three-by-one, we run a dart. But that'd be it. Okay? I mean, every once in a while we'll run a jet sweep, just, I guess, because I get bored. I don't know. But, I mean, you know, the coaches in here at play this, they know we're not making a living running the jet sweep. All right? So, uh, RPOs. We are going to run RPOs. Uh, and so, we don't run a bunch. I keep them pretty simple. I had receivers who had never played a varsity snap. They're going to run a hitch. That's what they're going to run. I've, I've, been, I've been throwing the ball around forever. Okay, and I'm amazed at how easy, how I've forgotten how good a hitch is. A guy catches it five yards, and it may be five yards, but then sometimes it becomes 20 yards. And so 
Uh, we're going to throw hitches. Sometimes we would throw slant. We didn't throw that very much at all, to be honest with you. But we had it in there. That was my other play to the two receiver side. And then on the one receiver side, we had a check if a safety was coming down and it was a glance. Didn't throw that but a handful of times. Okay, so mainly we threw hitches. And I know it seems simple, but it's what we did. The guys in here can tell you. All right, the other thing that we did, and to me, this is where it kind of comes into uh, where it gets kind of good, is our play action pass. Our primary play action pass was a choice route. And I'm gonna talk about a choice route here in a minute. And you may already know about it or whatever, but it's what we practiced all the time. And I'll talk a little bit about how we practice it. So we really did two things. We ran choice route, uh, or we had double moves off our RPO. So what I mean by that, we'd run a hitch and go, or we'd run a slant and go, or a glance and go. We didn't do anything else. That's what we practiced. So uh, if we did anything else, it was uh, usually for the opponent that week, something I might see, but it wasn't what we lived off of. Uh, we did have a kind of a little fake it, a little fake roll out play, like a little flood concept, and we had a bootleg. We had one each of those. We didn't really vary it any. Um, okay, on the run game, we ran uh, power and counter. Okay, they for us, these are A gap or brown spot run plays. If the ball is on the hash, we constantly stayed on the tailback. We want the ball in the A gap. We do not want it to bounce. I don't care how much they squeeze it. Get up in the A gap. We want the ball, if the ball's on the hash, to be run down the hash. All right, we don't want it outside, okay? And so we really preach that a lot. And we get on them if they bounce it. Don't bounce it, get it up in there. And so, uh, and we didn't bounce it very often. And uh, okay, uh, and I'll talk about why we do that here in a minute, okay? As far as our passing game, everything, to us, every snap should look the same. Everything should look like we're running power or counter, all right? And when we're not running power or counter, we're throwing an RPO or we're faking it and we're play action pass, okay? So we wanted everything to look exactly the same. Uh, the thing I liked about our play action pass is we were have seven man max protection. So we're gonna get the ball off, all right? And I didn't have to worry about you know, doing a lot of different things protection wise. We were gonna have two backs staying in and we were gonna throw choice route. That's what we were gonna do. And if we were, have, we're gonna throw double moves, we were gonna have time to throw off. That was kind of what I was thinking on. So, okay. So this is the power play. This is nothing, everybody knows what this is. So, uh, this is just a forefront. When we went into a game, what we always talked about was who are the six guys that we have to block. Everybody else gets RPO, okay, if they're on the perimeter. Now, the reason that we uh, talked about running A gap and running the brown spot, uh, the center, is if everything gets run here, then these guys have to go, by the time they get in to make a tackle in here, we've already made five or six yards. And that was kind of the thought process on it. If we bounce it, I mean, I've coached defense. I want to bounce that sucker. Why do I want to bounce that sucker? So this guy who's unblocked can come make the play, right? You want it to be out in the B gap, the C gap, all the way out there. We don't want that. We want it in the A gap. We want that, that guy can make the tackle, but I want him to make it at six. And then we might break the tackle and it'd be more than that. So that was kind of the thinking. Uh, on RPOs, we do what everybody else does. On the play side, this is your RPO side. That's the guy we're reading. This is the gift side. And here's what I told the quarterback. If you ever get up there and you can throw the hitch, throw it. All right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about it. There's sometimes we could have run power and it looked, I mean, it was sweet. But he pulled it and he threw hitch. That's okay. We're gonna probably complete it. All right? So, I always gave him the green light to throw it whenever he wanted, and our quarterback had a little savvy. He would be good about faking it here, even if he knew he was going to throw the gift, just to throw a fake in there. All right, but he would flash fake it and get it out. I always told him, if you're getting blitz off the edge, forget about the fake. Just get the ball out. Okay. All right. So that's power. That's your basic thing. Uh, I think this is a forefront. Somebody, we didn't see a lot of forefront, but we did here. 
And that's right down the hash. I coach the tailbacks. <laughs> so, anyhow. All right. So here we go. Here's the end zone view. I think it'll run. There we go. And the thing that the thing I would show you uh, is this. Um, well, if I can get it to do it. That's why I don't like having it without huddle. But is this guy is the outside linebacker and this guy. But by the time they get to him, and he didn't try to hardly make a tackle, but by the time he touched him, it was six yards down the field. Okay? Uh, and that's the whole point of it. Okay. All right. So when we played an odd front, we play a ton of odd front teams. I really don't like running power against an odd front team unless they're going to put a five tech out there. Uh, we're normally more counter against the odd fronts, but we will run it if they're going to play a five. And what we do is we consider these six guys, this backside linebacker, we consider him blocked. If we get the safety creeping in here, which we did, that's when we would look to throw the glance. Uh, the coach at uh, Coach Webb at Rockwall, they would signal when they're going to throw the glance. The receiver and the quarterback would have a little signal for throwing the glance. Okay, so on the one receiver side, they were throwing hitch or throwing glance. I mean, they're a 6A big school, and that's what they're doing. Okay, uh, my guys, because they don't know what they're doing, no matter how much I coach them, they would call glance every play, you know. So everybody's looking up, going up there like, they don't know what the, you know. So basically, it got to where I just called it if I saw the safety in the box, or I would let the quarterback call it if he saw him in the box, but uh. You know, but it's one of those things where if you left it to the receivers, that's what they'd run every time, no matter what. All right, so. Uh, so it's an opera play. Sir? What if he's a four? Why, why does that change your, your, your reason out on the power? He's set up. Okay, well, if any of you, you played a lot of mint, or people played mint or four eyes, like if they've got a good four eye and your tackle and they stalemate it in the hole, it's going to be tough to run it. Okay, and so uh, so I would I, I don't feel like we're going to get the movement that I want to run the power. You know what I mean? We call it an A gap play, and that's where I want it to hit. But for in order for it to be in the A gap, my tackle's got to push everything back past the A gap. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So uh, whenever we would. You know, if we got somebody's play running a lot of four I, we probably were not, we would have a we would probably run more counter than power. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Kind of happy. Did you guys ever aren't release the tackle on that board and see if you follow it and kick it? That's what we do on the counter. So I'll show you that. That's kind of what we what we ended up doing. Okay. So anyway, so that would be and we would get a lot of people playing fives. We get a lot of fives in an odd front, people slanting that way, running fives. Uh, we would get that. Uh, this is Clinton. They had a big old dude. They put it a five tech. My little old end, that was actually my son. He actually got him out of the way for once. All right. And, uh, and so anyway, there you go. Just your typical uh, power play. Wrap up in there. The guy making the play is the outside linebacker. He's going to make the tackle, and we made 10 yards, okay? So we're okay with that. All right. Okay, this is the quarterback taking the hitch, and uh, that kid, he did not – that, that was our best receiver. He had not played since the ninth grade. And I talked him into playing, uh, which was a good thing because – he ended up being, but anyway, this is one of those with the quarterback. He knows he wants to throw the hitch, but he just faked it and then threw the hitch anyway. All right? And I mean, that kid's not like he's running a 4 3 or anything. That's the best I had. All right. Okay, so this is, uh, we're running power, but this is a hitch to the H with the uh, outside linebacker getting up in the box. Uh, this is one of those where, um, when you see the, oh, I thought I had the end zone view on this. Hang on. I guess I didn't. 
Anyway, we do run a tackle overset, kind of an unbalanced line. And we just try to catch it and get up, get north and south with it. Okay? All right. Okay, this is the glance on the backside. We actually threw it a little late. Uh, the outside backer was up in the box. It was basically a 4-4 four, four, cover three. And the safety was on the other side of the field. Okay, sometimes we would get people who would be in an odd front and then would walk the outside backer up and roll the coverage. Like I knew that was gonna be something we would get. Uh, so we would get that sometimes. So we would just lock our tackle, our right tackle, was our best uh, lineman. Uh, so we usually felt pretty good, other than if it was the kid at Lona, we couldn't block him. But, uh, but anybody else we'd feel pretty good about. And then we would just kick the outside back with the, with, the, with the Y. And we didn't get that a lot, but we, did, we knew we would probably get it and ended up uh, doing it some here. Like I said, I coach the tailback. So. Are you teaching the washer coach? Excuse me? Is that tackle going to wash or is he going to push him out? I mean, what's his rule on that there? We just told him, take him wherever you can take him. Okay. I, I mean, because, you know, if he's in a five, we're going to block him out. Most of the time, if that guy's there, we're getting some sort of pinch. And so we would, you know, we would just tell him, take away inside first. Because that would be the tougher block, and if it crosses your face, just wash it down. So, all right. So here's counter, and this is no magic to this either. Uh, I drew it up against a three-three stack. That doesn't really matter. But our, we're going to have six guys. We're going to block. We're going to uh, kind of head fake with the Y and bring him back to make it look like power. The tailback steps for power and counter were exactly the same. They were always, we're going to line up on the quarterback's heels, we're going to slide step, and then we're hitting it downhill into the A-gap. It didn't matter if it was power or counter, he's still going to the brown spot of the center. So it wasn't like we counter stepped with the tailback like some people do. Everything was here and then downhill. So uh, it didn't change any. Well, see if I can get this to work. All right, here we go. We're running counter to the right. This is a different tailback. All right, and so you can see the first guy that hits him is the outside linebacker on that play. All right. Okay, now. Yes, sir. Well, uh, yes, like when we played Clinton, uh, their guy, they, had, they put one of their beasts in there. And our guard, he would just go whip the dog out of it. And so what we did, uh, and I'll show you here in a second, we art blocked it and then kicked him to influence him, basically what we ended up doing. So, uh, okay, here we are just throwing hitch. And the thing that I liked about throwing the hitch uh, is that we catch it. If we just make a guy miss, you know, then the only guy that's going to be able to get him is the safety. All right. Now, we played odd front. Sometimes we would – we didn't really arc it. We stabbed to think, make them think that we were blocking them and then went out and kicked the outside linebacker, okay? So it wasn't like we took a big arc step out. It was stabbing, making him think he's getting blocked. He'll come up field and then go kick. Uh, and hey, here's Southside. So they did a really good job against us, by the way. That was pretty good. I'm hoping I had the end zone on this. Oh, here we go. So you can see it. So we stab it. Kick it, we wrapped up in there. So anyway, you kind of get the idea of what we're trying to do with that. Okay, 
Uh, all right, choice routes. I'm going to talk about the choice route. Now, you got to remember, this is like our, the only thing we practice, really, and the only thing we throw. I mean, this is it. And I'll talk a little bit. I didn't put it up here, but I will talk about how we uh, practice it. Uh, this is our primary pass play. It's play action, seven-man protection, and it's something that I never would have done before because I never wanted – I was never a believer in having guys read routes and that kind of stuff. Okay, it just wasn't me. I wanted to tell them where to go, and if they screwed up, I could tell them that they screwed up, all right? And I, I always figured, well, I know what the coverage is. I'll call a good route, you know, whatever. All right, uh, but we can call it to any receiver, um, and – uh, the thing I probably like the most is the quarterback knew exactly who was going to get the ball. There was no doubt on anybody on our side of the ball who was getting the ball thrown to them. All right. And so, uh, so here we go. Uh, we would have it to the, call it to the receiver. So we would call Z choice or X choice or H choice. All right. Everybody knew who was going to get it. Here are the rules. You're going to run a 10 yard, it's a 10 yard <laughs> trap meet. 10-yard sprint right at the defender that's over you. Now, here's the thing that I would always get into is my guys would be like, eight's good enough. No, 10. We don't make a decision. We don't have a choice until 10. 10-yard track meet sprint. All right, and at 10 yards, you've got three choices. <coughs> really, to be honest with you, because our splits are so wide, we really only ended up with two. But technically, we tell them three. All right? So... What we would tell them is this, if you can get to the guy, if you can step on his toes, all right, and he is, uh, or if you can't step on his toes, I'm sorry, if you can't step on his toes at 10 yards, you can't get to him, he's backpedaling, you ain't getting there. At 10 yards, you run a stop route. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Uh, okay, if you can get to him and he's outside leverage. Now, here's the thing with us. We probably didn't throw but two or three post routes all year. Our outside guys are so wide that nobody hardly puts their corners outside leverage on somebody that wide. You know, I mean, I wouldn't. So, uh, but sometimes on an inside receiver, we would get it, all right? But we would run a post if we had an outside receiver and, and the guy was outside leverage. If he was inside leverage and you're even with him, run a fade. And when I started doing this, I thought, we'll never get through the fade. Our guys aren't fast enough. It didn't matter. People will let you run by them. It always amazed me. And then eventually, if you throw it a few times, everybody backs up really fast. And the people that you shouldn't be able to run anything on will give you the stop because they don't want you to beat them on the fade. Okay? It's just kind of weird how, you know, kids are and coaches are and stuff like that. Uh, the biggest problem we had is, one, our kids would not want to go 10 yards. We had to constantly harp about that. But everybody thinks they can run by everybody. And I'd be like, dude, you, you know, the guy's 15 yards off of you. Just stop, you know. But especially when we first did it the first few weeks. Uh, okay, so here are the rules for the receivers. If you're not the guy getting the ball, okay. So if you're not the guy getting the ball, uh, if you're an inside receiver, we're going to run a dig at 10 yards. We're going to run at number two. The safety's going to run at number – he's going to run at him. He's going to run a dig at 10. All right. If you're the outside receiver, so let's say we call it H choice, so he's running the choice route. If you're an outside receiver, you're just running the stop. It's all predicated on keeping the other guy out of the play, all right? And the thing that's probably the weirdest is if you're on the backside, don't do anything. You can just stand there for all I care. I'd tell them, I don't care what you do. So you can just walk off the ball, look around. I don't really care. So you ain't getting the ball, you know, so. Uh, save, your, save, save your energy, which is really weird, but the reason he did it is, why well, run that when you're going to have to go, you're going to have to go. So, uh, and it's not like, you know, the people on the other side of the field know that you're not running around. So, you know, so I've had people ask me that. Well, Coach, won't that give it away? Well, not unless you're, you got some headsets on or something. So, anyway, uh, all right, here we go. So, this is, uh, I believe this is a, uh, up top, I think, is um, – I think this is the first play of the game, actually. We just started off with this. Seven-man protection. 
And I always uh, told the quarterback, anticipate throwing the fade. It's easier to pull up and throw the stop than it is to reset and throw a fade. And like I said, I was always amazed we got to throw any fades. Uh, now, let me say this uh, before I play this. I had to be very specific about when I called choice to what receiver, not because of their ability level, because they were all kind of almost the same, but where the ball was, okay? I'm not throwing choice all the way across the hash. Art Bryles has got a quarterback who can throw that. Uh, in Texas, they play with college rules where the hash marks are in tighter. So even they can throw it to the field, you know, and it won't matter. I'm not gonna throw it all the way across the field, all right? Now, a couple of times I would screw up and call it that way and we would complete it for some reason, but it wasn't on purpose, all right? So, uh, or my quarterback would think, well, surely means to throw it way out there. Uh, that would happen occasionally. But anyway, so like here, we're on this left hash. The way we always practice it was like the X's. If I had them, the ball was gonna be in the middle or on the left hash when they got the ball, okay? For the Z's, the guys up top, the ball is going to be on the middle or the right hash if they ever got the ball. The H's, I always just did it with them. Uh, I would flip the hashes. Like if we were on the left hash, you know, he would be running it on the right. If we were on the right hash, he'd be running on the left. We always, I shouldn't say always, 90% of the time, put the two receivers to the field. They already knew when the ball's on the right hash, you're going to the left if you're the H. I didn't have to call it almost, but I did, but I didn't have to. Okay. Well, let's see if I can get this to work. Nope, apparently not. Here we go. And the thing that happens is this kid down here was a junior. He had never played any receiver reps in varsity. But we throw this every day. We throw it every day. Well, guess what? Eventually they get to where they can catch stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? If that's all you ever run, uh, they get to where you can throw it. And we got better. Like, when we would get out there at first, we would be throwing the ball. We wouldn't even come close to catching one because the quarterback would throw it out of bounds or something like that. Well, eventually, we would get a little better at it. Okay, so this is a stop route. Okay, so we got stop route. We got choice called into the boundary. Kids bailing, pulled out, throw a stop. There you go. Okay, pretty simple. All right. Um, okay, I guess that was it. So if you're somebody that's wanting to do two by two, three by one, I'm, I didn't talk about any of that stuff because we didn't do as much of that. We will be uh, probably more this fall. Uh, they, do some, they did some pretty cool stuff with that too uh, as far as splits and it's more fast screen oriented because it's two receivers. Um, I would say the biggest thing that I thought coming into this is everybody's just going to lock up man and bring the house is what I thought, okay? Um, and when we did play people who played a man, I knew that's what I was going to get. We did tweak some stuff, okay? I ran more compressed sets and things like that. But in a general rule, I didn't want to be where I was having to play action and throw shots every time, okay? So what I did is I had a... a an overset, unbalanced line set, but we would still run power and still have twins to that side so I could still do all our RPO stuff, if that makes sense, okay? And so we could run, you know, we'd have a tight, you know, an, um, a tackle over, tight end on the backside, twins, and we're running power. And we're running RPOs and running choice. And that was kind of my answer if I thought I was gonna get a lot of money. All right, so I, or just as a change up. So, anyhow. You got any questions? Anything you want to ask about? Who painted the horse on that big on the uh, <laughs> The one who paints it the first is me. <laughs> I'm the one who does it first so it doesn't get screwed up. And then we have a person who paints the field every week, and it's his job to make sure I don't have to.